Hello folks and welcome to my review of this monstrous car, the Jaguar F-Pace SVR. It's got a 5 litre supercharged V8 with 500 PS of power that can take you from 0 to 60 in just 3.8 seconds, as well as having an amazing soundtrack to accompany it. <laughs> Now the 700 newton meters of torque that this car offers not only gets you down the road nice and quickly but also means you can tow about 2.4 tons with it although it's not going to be a particularly cheap thing to use as a towing vehicle with a WLTP official fuel economy figure of 23 and real world figures a little bit south of that. Now when it comes to the styling of this car despite the fact that it's got quad exhaust tailpipes and huge 22 inch wheels um, it doesn't really have that sort of ostentatious feel to it it slightly flies under the radar a bit don't get me wrong no one's going to confuse it with the base spec diesel model but it doesn't sort of stand there and kick you in the face and say look at me and all my money like some of its rivals do i like it so when it comes to the boot, you're not going to be disappointed with the 613 litres of space on offer here. You've also got a load of space underneath the boot floor, which is very useful. Big, wide, flat load area. You're going to have no problems with this at all. You've also got quite handy little hooks to hang bags on so you don't have your shopping rolling around in the back. And you've got a 12 volt charger up there. Very nice. So the infotainment system's absolutely brilliant. You've got this large, really bright, really vibrant screen with great resolution and good clear graphics. It's slightly curved outwards, which you may find a bit odd, but it really helps to reduce the glare on the screen when you're driving and works really, really well. You do have a ton of real estate as well, but for me, the highlight is its integration with Apple CarPlay and I assume with Android Auto in the same way, although I can't test that personally. Take the navigation, for example, you can have the navigation set to either the Pivi Pro navigation, which is the standard nav in this, in this car, which is a very, very nice system, really good satellite imagery, really simple to use, brilliant piece of kit. If you prefer Apple CarPlay, however, it's as simple as going to the main menu and changing the navigation. So I've now got that for my iPhone. How easy is that? And it works in exactly the same way for media. I've currently got the media set to my podcast app, listening to Smith and Sniff. Go and check that out if you haven't already. A good one for car lovers. Uh, but you've also got DAB radio, FM radio, AM radio, tune in radio. And of course, you can get lots more apps. Uh, I can't log into that because I need a, a, a special login and this is a press car, so I don't have one. But I assume you've got Spotify and all the usual suspects there. In most cars, your Apple CarPlay or your Android Auto are either sort of on or they're off. In this, it's just seamless to go between them and the way it integrates features of both into that one unit is supremely well done. It's a brilliant piece of kit. In terms of controls for it, we've got plenty of controls on the steering wheel here, mixture of haptics and physical buttons and dials. There's also a control volume knob down here and you can mute it quite easily from down here. The actual screen itself is all touch screen, but you do have physical controls for your temperature settings, for the air con, uh, for your heated seats, for your cooled seats. And then we've got some sort of virtual buttons and they're not quite haptics, not quite physical buttons. They're somewhere in between for things like the heated front windscreen, the heated rear screen, and a few additional aircon controls. Very well laid out, all very good quality. The temperature controls have a nice sort of tactile feel to them and it all works brilliantly well. So down here, we've got a very modern gear selector. Also got the drive mode selector, which just pops in and out of the center console uh, as you need it. We've got the start stop button, two cup holders, a 12 volt socket and an adjustable armrest and little cubby there with a USB-C and a USB-A. Just under the aircon controls, you've also got a wireless charging pad in this particular car. Material quality throughout the cabin is really very good. It's only once you get down below sort of knee level that things get slightly firmer, um, although still with a little bit of give to them. No really hard scratchy stuff in here at all to speak of. As for the steering wheel itself, it's uber comfortable under the hand. It's heated, which has been an absolute godsend in the last couple of weeks. And it's got a nice variation of textures in the leather. Um, you've also got flappy paddles here, which in a car like this, you do actually use from time to time. 
Their seats are a triumph. They're sports seats, they grip you like a glove, uh, but they're not uncomfortable. They've also got what must be the most impressive lumbar support adjustment uh, I've ever seen. You can take it from almost nothing there to it feeling like you've got a bowling ball stuck in your lower back. It's brilliant. The driver information display is really good as well. Very clear, very bright, very vivid. Um, yeah, probably a bit of a tip of the hat to Audi with their virtual cockpit design in as much as it's very customizable. It's a brilliant display and um, it doesn't really suffer from any glare, which is great. Okay, so in the back here, that theme of high quality really just comes through because it's great. The seats are actually, because they're cut away at the top here, you've, you've really still got quite a good view from the rear seats. Uh, the driver's seat's in my normal driving position at the moment. I've got plenty of leg room and there's plenty of headroom despite the fact that I've got this huge panoramic sunroof above which often cuts into legroom in a lot of cars. You've got heated seat controls for the back here. You've got two USBs, they're both USB A's, and we've got a 12 volt socket, pockets in the back of the driver's seat and the passenger seat. You can easily accommodate three adults across the back here, although there's a very large transmission tunnel, as you would probably expect in a car of this type. Um, but there is probably still enough room to get another pair of feet in here. Again, really comfortable seats. The panoramic roof really does brighten up what would otherwise be quite a dark place to travel in, um, but very, very nice quality throughout. Really can't fault this thing for its interior in any way. And I've got the child locks on and I'm in here on my own and I've locked myself in. So I'm sure it'll come as no surprise to you that this F-Pace SVR is no slouch from 0 to 60. In fact, the 0 to 60 time on it's just 3.8 seconds and it's got obviously immense amounts of power with that 550 brake horsepower, supercharged V8. It just dishes out power for days and days. Uh, what will surprise you, however, is just how well the car handles for such a tall, heavy vehicle. Uh, it handles a bit like a sports car, only without that harsh suspension that you normally expect with a sports car. It's actually very refined cruising along the road and even over slightly bumpy surfaces, it's in no way uncomfortable. It's a very composed, relaxing car to drive, despite the fact that it goes like, you know what, off a shovel. So the weather's fairly awful today, folks, and you do get a bit of noise in the cabin from the wind and the rain, and of course, a little bit of tire noise. Um, what's less bothersome is the noise you get from this glorious V8 engine. I mean, it sounds phenomenal. Woof. Don't get me wrong, the wind and road noise is not intrusive, really. It's just I expect it to be a little bit quieter in a car in this class, particularly one that's so luxurious as this in every other way. Now, when you get into a car with this engine in it and this much power and performance, you might expect it to be a rip-snorting beast that's quite difficult to control. Uh, there is a mode for that. You know, you can put it into rip-snorting beast mode, but in everyday use, in your standard drive settings, this thing is just a dream to drive. It's just as happy doing the school run or going to Sainsbury's as it is tearing along a back road. I have to say, it's a car with plenty of personalities and uh, pretty much all of them are favourable. So generally, I love the way it performs, I love the way it drives, I love the infotainment system, I love the quality of the interior. What don't I like? there must be something. Well, I have to say, it's the running cost. And if you're buying a car like this and you're not going for one of the diesel options or one of the lower power petrol options, probably that's not gonna bother you. But I mean, this one I'm sitting in right now is actually 90 grand. They're available at just under 80 grand, but the one I'm sitting in right now is 90 grand. If you've got 90 grand to spend on a car like this, mm. MPG is possibly not a major issue for you. Uh, the WLTP on this is just over 23 MPG. In the real world, um, you'll get about 18, I would say. That's with a fairly mixed driving. I haven't done any long motorway runs in it as yet, but certainly round town and some A roads and dual carriageway stuff, uh, we are talking around about 18 MPG if you're driving it fairly normally. And don't think you can go filling this up on your supermarket E10. I'm afraid, folks, an engine like this needs premium unleaded. 
So I spoke about the drive modes earlier. They're really easy to access via this little knob that pops up at the center console. Um, you've got a winter driving mode, an eco mode. You've got your comfort mode, which is the standard default mode for the car. And then you've got dynamic, which is a checkered flag. All the dials go red and all hell breaks loose. As you might expect from a modern performance car, that dynamic mode also allows you to customise uh, the responsiveness of various aspects of the car and really you can tweak it to make it your own. So I've got the car in dynamic mode now and it seems like a decent opportunity to um, let its hair down a little bit. So let's just... I mean, that pickup is astonishing, but nothing quite gets me like the sound of that V8. It is glorious, absolutely glorious. Once you pop it into that dynamic mode, you feel so many of the characteristics of the car immediately change. The suspension firms up slightly, but it still won't knock out your fillings. It still feels really quite nice, actually, quite comfortable. The steering becomes more precise, a little bit more compliant, and the gearbox becomes instantly more aggressive. It just wants to go. By the way, if you're watching this in July or August or September and you're wondering why I'm so unashamedly wearing Alpine chic today, it is just a few days before Christmas that I'm filming this. And I have to say that if Santa arrived with one of these in his sack for me this year rather than the traditional Terry's chocolate orange, uh, I wouldn't be upset. In fact, I'd be delighted. It's rare to find such a large car that gives such sort of uncompromised performance, handling, ride comfort and practicality. It ticks all those boxes. The one it doesn't tick is efficiency because, you know, it's just not very efficient, is it? 18 MPG on premium unleaded is going to get costly very quickly. But as I said before, if you're in the market for one of these, I would suggest that's perhaps not an issue for you. I always sum these reviews up by telling you how I feel about the car going back and uh, because of the Christmas break I've spent more time with this one than I normally would and I'll, I'm going to cry. I'm actually going to cry. Um, my bank manager will probably be delighted because of the amount that I won't be spending on fuel but I'm going to cry when this goes. I love it. It's great. If you're interested in looking at the latest lease deals that are available on a Jaguar F-Pace, simply click the link in the video description to Lease Loco. That will take you through to their site and it will show you all the latest up-to-date deals on the F-Pace at the time you click and it helps support the channel. And once you've done that, please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment and of course subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. Thanks ever so much for watching folks. I'll see you on the next one.